Welcome to the first episode of the Fusion Friday series. Here we're going to take some Fusion concept and break it down so it's easy to understand and you know how to use it. Today we're going to be talking about resolution in Fusion, which at face value seems pretty simple, but trust me, there is probably more to it than you think. And if you're anything like most people, you're probably doing part of it wrong. The main reason resolution does not matter as much in Fusion as it does in some other motion graphics and compositing programs is because Fusion has its own coordinate system, making it mostly resolution independent. Instead of displaying the exact pixel value, value like After Effects or even the inspector on the edit page, it uses a value between 0 and 1. This means that the value 0.5 will always be the center of the screen whether you're working in 1080p, 4K or vertical resolutions. Overall, this system is awesome because it is so easy to understand and use. If you want to put something a quarter of the way across the screen, instead of doing 1920 divided by 4, all you need to do is type in 0.25 and it's going to put it exactly there. If you want to align it to one of the sides, you can just type in 0 for the left side or 1 for the right side. Same thing goes for the Y axis. 0 is going to be the bottom and 1 is going to be the top. Keep in mind that the Y axis is relative to the vertical resolution instead of the horizontal resolution. Let me show you one more example of how useful this is, and then I'll talk about a position tool that doesn't work this way. If you have a rectangle mask that you need to take up 60% of the screen, instead of coming in here and trying to figure out all the math, all you need to do is type in 0.6. Then you can set the height to be 1 so it takes up the entire frame and you're good to go. Now if you want to align it to one of the corners, again instead of having to do all the math, you can just do 0.6 divided by 2 and then type that in so 0.3 and now it is perfectly aligned to the left side. You can take this a step further and set the center to be 0 and then double the width. So that way we get the exact same size, but if we change the width, it will always appear to be perfectly aligned to the left. A benefit of setting it up this way is if we change the corner radius, it, it appears to only apply it to the one side, even though all the way on the left here it is rounding the corner. This makes aligning stuff really easy, especially when you bring in stuff like expressions. Try doing all the same stuff with pixels, it's much more annoying and it'll probably break if you change the resolution. Now Fusion changes up this coordinate system a bit in one of their other systems, which it does for a good reason. The tools in the shape system still use that 0 to 1 system, but with some key differences. Instead of 0 .5, 0 0.5 being the center, it is 0 and 0. But if I set the width to be 1, it is still going to take up that entire frame. And if I offset it by negative 0.5, that is going to bring it to the left side. And if I offset it by positive 0.5, it'll bring it to the right side. The biggest change in the system is the Y value. You'll notice if I take the height and set this to be 1, it is not capped off at the top of the screen. And that's because this height control, rather than being based on the vertical resolution, is based on the horizontal resolution. It is set up this way so it's really easy to make square circles and all those different types of shapes. All you have to do is make sure these two values are matched. So for example, if I type in 0 0.4, 0 0.4, we have a perfect square. In the shape system, this is awesome, but if you want to get it to fit perfectly in your frame, you can take 1 and divide that by your aspect ratio. So we'll do 1 divided by 16 multiplied by 9. That's going to make it so the height is locked off to our frame, and then we can bring the width out and get a full screen shape. It's also nice to know that the same can be done in a normal rectangle node if we want to get something to be a square. So I could take the height, and instead of dividing, I want to multiply by 16 divided by 9. Now it's going to give me a perfect square. This is something that can be automated using expressions, so no matter what you set the width to, it'll automatically make it into a square. So check out my expression cheat sheet down below that has some info on how to do that. I know this can seem a bit confusing, having these differences between the two systems, but overall I think this is a really good decision they made, since the shape system is much better at creating shapes, and the normal version is much better for everything else. Okay, two more things. Overriding resolutions and working with mismatched resolutions. That last one is what people get wrong most of the time. Node resolutions will default to the composition resolution. In all of the generator nodes under the image tab, we can see what this is. Since auto resolution is turned on, if I update my project resolution, all of these generator nodes will update to match. Most of the time people leave this on, but depending on your project, it can be extremely useful to turn this off and set your own custom resolution. So if I type in 3840 by 2160, I will get a 4K canvas. But what happens when we run into a situation where two different resolutions meet? You can see my canvas got bigger, but this text stayed the same size, and that's because this text is 1920 by 1080. Fusion doesn't have any automatic scaling like you might find on the edit page, so if I want this to fit, I would have to manually do it either by changing the resolution in the text node or by scaling it up by a factor of 2. In a text node, that's easy to fix, because we can just come into the image tab and change its resolution to match. But what happens if we're working in an image that is in 1080p? Most of the time, people don't notice an issue with this, and if they do, they don't know how to fix it. 
In this merge node, everything is going to appear to be normal. If I set the center X to be zero, it's going to move it all the way to the left side of the screen. And if I set it to be one, it moves it all the way to the right. But let's say I do shift space and add in a transform after the media in. If I do the exact same thing, setting this to be zero, I'm going to get a totally different result. And that's because from the perspective of the transform node, it is in 1080p in a square aspect ratio. So to get the same result, I'd have to move it way farther past zero. Okay, that's not that big of a deal unless you're trying to perfectly align stuff, right? Let's say I want to add a glow to this image. You'll notice that everything disappears. And that's because the clipping mode in this node is set to frame, meaning it's not going to render on anything that's not visible. So you can set this to be none to get it to work, but it doesn't fix the core problem of having different resolutions. Thankfully, the solution to this is pretty easy. Right after the media in, we first want to start with a resize node. This is going to automatically scale our image to the resolution that we set in the inspector. But you'll notice that it's going to stretch our logo, and that is not at all what we want. So in the inspector, let's first select keep frame aspect, and that's going to make sure no matter what resolution we set it to, it's going to have these same dimensions. Now, since we're working in a square aspect ratio, we just need to match this with the lower resolution of the two that we're working with. So in this case, we want to set the height to be 2160. Now, when I click on the merge node, you can see this image is perfectly lining up with the top of our canvas, but the width still isn't quite right. So let's add in a crop node right after this resize. We're going to set the X size to be 3840 by 2160 to match our composition. Then we can press this keep center button so that way it remains in the middle. So using these two nodes will allow us to fix any problem working with mismatch resolutions. So just to test this, we can add in a transform. We could set this to be zero and it goes perfectly to the side. And if we add in a glow node, you can see that is going to work no problems at all. A really common place that this gets messed up is using trackers. I've done this so many times that I've tracked a 4K video and try to add in a 1080p graphic. When I do that, I get really confused because it seems to have half the movement that it should. And I got a good track, so why is this not working? And the reason it was all breaking is because I was working with mismatched resolutions that I could just use one or two nodes to fix. You can never apply a 4K track to a 1080p image or vice versa, unless you wanted to use different resolutions for an effect. I did that in my Iron Man HUD video if you want to check that out for an example of breaking this rule. If you guys have any questions for me about the system, ask them in the comments below. Also leave suggestions for what fusion systems or features you want to see an episode covering. If you want to support the series and speed up your editing workflow at the same time, check out my DaVinci Resolve editing packs linked down below. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.